Salesforce.com is excellent at tracking your customer relationship management information, but it's also a really good tool for bridging that sales and marketing gap. And one of the ways that you can do this is by using the campaigns tool from within Salesforce. Now right out of the box, you can see that I've uh, selected my marketing app here. Uh, you can jump between these apps for a different view. Right now I'm in marketing, so I have the campaigns tab available. Now I don't currently have any campaigns uh, set up, so I'm going to start by creating my first campaign. You'll notice there's a couple of tools here that we can get as far as reports when it comes to getting your return on, analysis, uh, return on investment analysis, uh, campaign members or revenue reports. These are right out of the box. Creating a campaign from scratch is just as simple as hitting new. And we'll just call this our uh, February campaign. Now, when you're creating these campaigns, you can, of course, customize these fields to represent anything that you'd like. This is just a, a completely out-of-the-box setup. When I look at the different uh, options that I have here, I'm going to make this active. I can determine the type. And uh, campaigns really are just any kind of event, whether it's, as it shows here, an ad, email, telemarketing. Maybe you have uh, banner ads that you're tracking click-through rates on, uh, PR, partners. And of course, you can change this list to represent what you're going to do. I'm going to do today uh, an email campaign. Below that is the parent campaign. And actually, Salesforce gives you the ability to almost do drip marketing, where I can have maybe an email campaign as the parent and then select multiple different emails that I can track the, uh, the status of. And I'll give you an example of that at the end. Right now, we're going to leave the parent campaign blank. Below this is the planning area where I can determine perhaps a, a start date and an end date. We'll just have this as a one day. Uh, maybe the number that I'm going to send out, uh, we'll just put in uh, 10K. Uh, expected response, I'm gonna look for about a 2.5% response rate. And you'll see why I'm entering this information in a moment. And I'm hoping to pull in about 10K, uh, my budgeted cost, and I'll put in my actuals later. And that's it. I've created the framework for my campaign. So you can see all the information that I put in, but again, you can always create your own fields to track different things about your campaigns. Campaigns will also work with uh, Enterprise Edition and above with record types. So in other words, being able to have different types of campaigns based on um, uh, perhaps if it's an email campaign, you'd like to track these five fields. But if it's going to be a direct mail, I'd like to track some other different fields. You can create your record types there. So we can see my planning area, all the information that I put in. And below that are all the fields that Salesforce is going to be populating from total responses, leads, converted, amount of contacts created, the number of opportunities, how many of those have we won. And of course, that's how we generate our ROI report. So how do we start to add people to this particular campaign? Well, you can see at the top here that I have a manage members area. And I can bring these members in by searching my contacts, my leads within Salesforce, importing files. Perhaps you attended a trade show and scanned names into an Excel file. You can import that. We can edit members en masse and, of course, update and add members to existing campaigns. Because we're starting with a very basic campaign here, I'm going to add members from a search from within my database. You'll notice at the top here that I can either add members or modify existing. Again, we are going to be uh, choosing our members from the database here of either leads or contacts. I'm going to start with leads. From the steps of um, uh, filtering your criteria, you can determine how you would like to search. So again, these fields are going to be dependent on you. What fields have you created within uh, Salesforce? These are the basic ones that come out of the box. So I could say, show me all of my uh, leads from Toronto, and I'm going to send out a mass email to them. Alternatively, I can use an existing view. So I can create uh, views within leads and use that view right within uh, my campaign members. Uh, and this really helps cut back on that duplication. So I'll go in and say, all right, I'm just going to take all of my open leads, and Salesforce will bring back a list of all open leads that I have. In this case, there's uh, just the four that come out of the, uh, the, the trial. So I'm going to go ahead and select all of them. And I'm going to add them with the status of sent. Bearing in mind, I can come back and mark them as responded later if they do respond to my campaign. So I'm going with add as sent. It will show me that I have successfully added four members to this particular campaign. 
So now when I go back to look at that February campaign that we set up, I can now see that we have four total leads. But what does this mean as far as tracking information? Well, when I jump back into my leads tab, and let's have a look at all of my open leads, and we're going to use Jim Steele as an example here. Now, when I look at uh, Jim's uh, lead record, I can see over here in the campaign history that he is actually tied to that campaign that we just created. So, as I work this particular lead, maybe I'm going to convert it, and I'll create a new opportunity. We'll just give this a name and hit convert. When I go into this opportunity that we've created, and I'll put an amount in here of 10K, and hit save, Salesforce automatically knows that this particular lead came from that campaign. My primary campaign source is the February campaign. So when I go into that, I can see that we had four leads. One of those has been converted. We have one contact, one opportunity, which we haven't marked as one yet, but I can see the total value of opportunities is $10,000. Again, when I go back into that uh, 10K opportunity, and we'll just close that out. Now when I go back into my February campaign, we can see that information has been updated. I can now start to uh, set up my return on investment reports. These reports are available right out of the box. I simply go into the reports tab under campaign reports. I can see all of the out of the box reports that are available to me. If I want to see this uh, ROI analysis, I can see here's our February campaign and I can see all of the information that resides uh, within that campaign. Of course, you can customize this and um, perhaps export it directly into Excel or have the report run and scheduled and delivered to your marketing managers on a uh, weekly, monthly, quarterly basis, whatever is up to you. Once I've uh, completed this campaign, I can now go in and take the status and change it to uh, a completed campaign. And like any other object in Salesforce, it has related lists. So down below, I'm able to see that hierarchical structure. So if there is a parent and a child relationship between campaigns, you'll see it here. The open activities, activity history, which opportunities are uh, in this particular campaign? Who are my campaign members? And of course, the ability to go in manage those members, change their status as they reply uh, to your varying campaigns and track them as they move their way through the sales cycle. For an example of what it would look like with a uh, parent and child relationship, I can jump into an existing campaign that I have running where I can see this hierarchical structure. So I have my overall email, but uh, here are the three subsidiaries or sorry, the three different uh, components to my email marketing campaign. And of course that hierarchy runs up so I can see the efforts that have been put in by my marketing team, how much of what I've uh, <clears throat> put into our, uh, our campaigns has actually resulted in a hard dollar value, really bridging that marketing sales gap. One last element about the campaigns is the ability to track what we call campaign influence. So as a uh, administrator, I can go into my setup area, customize campaigns, and I can track my campaign influence. And campaign influence will let me know about other influential campaigns that may have led to my sale. So for example, we may have sent out three or four mailers to a customer and they attended a trade show, but what was most influential in this person purchasing with us? So we can specify our campaign influence time frame to let us know exactly how many days between the first associated date and when the opportunity was created to let us know which campaign was probably most likely. And of course, creating association rules that will allow us to automatically associate. So it goes far beyond just tracking your campaigns or your mailers and going into a real uh, clear way of tracking that marketing sales gap, being able to track all information about your campaigns, as well as working with your um, opportunities and leads and conversions that give you that whole return on investment from a marketing perspective.